Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. Hello, podcast listeners. Today, we have uh, an interesting thing that I found. So I saw a graphic. Um, I, I, I follow a few Facebook pages that are, you know, environmental friendly type ones. And one of them posted this graphic that said the average power drill has only been used for 13 minutes. If you need something but only use it once, borrow it or hire it instead. And I thought that was interesting. And th- and remember way back when, when we talked about uh, how we use Trello boards to plan all of our episodes and some of them just hang out for a very long time? This piqued my interest and I had no idea what to do with it. So it just sat there for like a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast isn't even a year and a half old, but it's been there a while. Yep. A good, good long while. <laughs> uh, but I think I finally figured out what we should talk about. So um, I heard a wedding photographer say a thing of like, here is one minute of a wedding. And it was literally all of the photos. And so I did some quick math. And the average wedding camera, by the same drill logic, is only used for 20 seconds a day. Crazy. That's, that's obviously wrong. But here's how I came up with that math. If you take 2,000 photos at a wedding at an average of 1 one-hundredth of a second, then you technically, I guess, only use the camera for 20 seconds. <laughs> well, I mean, you were only capturing images with it for 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time you were looking cool. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, with with all of that uh, meta philosophy mm-hmm. aside um i thought this was interesting um because the post was yeah you should rent it versus you should buy it and i thought about like hey when do you rent versus when you buy yeah uh i i'll i'll start with a really good example and this is not photography related but uh we moved into a new house and we put in new floors and i'm like hey there's a bunch of things like a table saw and stuff and a jigsaw and i d- and there was one of those saws for cutting like the trim so that you can get like the hardwood floor under it of like, I'm never going to need these things again. I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars buying them. I'm just going to rent them for like 10 bucks for the day or whatever. So I rented all that stuff. I put in the new floors and then I returned it. Um, but then there were a couple of items of like, Oh, I need a jigsaw again. Hey, any friends have a jigsaw? Yeah. One let me loan in. I go pick it up. And then another thing came up. I'm like, Oh, a jigsaw. Maybe I should buy a jigsaw. So it's kind of one of those things of like, okay, I'm starting to use this more than once. Where, where's the tipping point here? And so I went and bought one. Um, but I think that that does apply to photography. The alternative I've heard to this is, um, you should buy a tool from Harbor Freight that's junk. And if you use it to the point where it breaks, then you should buy a legitimate one. And if it doesn't break, then Hey, you have it on hand, but it's cheap junk. <laughs> I like it. Only really works for tools, but you know. <laughs> I like it. Eh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, Harbor Freight is insanely cheap, so mm. don't don't go buying cheap lenses because you're just run wasting money. Says the guy who just bought a cheap lens. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, I don't know. In the photography sphere, some of the cheap stuff is increasingly and surprisingly performant, so... Yeah, yeah I, the, I, the I just got a lens that actually I'm posting uh, I'm posting it of like tell me what lens you think it is so I'm not not gonna say what lens it is but yeah I, I just got a lens and it is a Chinese knockoff version of a lens but uh it works surprisingly well yeah, yeah so and like and like Godox and stuff work great for uh, like some of their lighting is lighting like yeah. competitive with way more expensive not just good for the price but like good straight up which is uh pretty impressive. So, yeah, what what about you? When do you when do you think people should rent versus buy? Um I I th- I think I fall very much on the same lines. Um if you're only going to use something once or 
you know, maybe only a few times or you're working on like a project where it's, it's a limited time and you're not going to use that piece of equipment again. Um, after that project is complete, I would probably rent it. I mean, some of this stuff is just not reasonable, reasonable to buy. Like as, as fun as it is to have new fancy gear, um, stuff like, uh, you know, like a, a phantom camera, um, for, you know, ultra, ultra high speed. I mean, those can be tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, and if you want it for a single shot or a single project, it's a lot nicer, you know, for that number to be Pay in the hundreds of bucks. dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hundreds of dollars instead of tens of thousands. Um, so stuff like that, that's really, I would say like the more niche something gets, the more likely I am to rent versus buy. Um, that does depend, of course, like often we find our own niches and something is used frequently enough that it's worth, worth purchasing. But um, yeah, that's where I would go. Increasingly niche and increasingly low use items uh would be my go-to um some some lenses could fall into the same thing that uh you're you're using this one specific lens only for one shot let's say as part of a uh part of some project and you don't want to spend you know a couple thousand bucks on whatever that lens is so you rent it and you spend a hundred bucks instead uh so that's that's my philosophy with that stuff of things coming up recently in kind of a different you know not explicitly a camera or a lens um i'm i've been doing some playing around with uh live streaming hardware and one of the things that works really well for that is what's called a bonded modem which basically has a bunch of different cellular connections um and it switches between them seamlessly so if you have like like let's say you've got you know t-mobile and at&t and at least in the u.s um, and not Sprint anymore, uh, but Verizon, let's say you've got those three. Uh, if you, if you're like T-Mobile drops off, then it switches to Verizon. And if Verizon drops off, then it switches to AT&T. It's all seamless. Um, those modems are very expensive. That's a very complicated piece of gear. And unless you're streaming on that, you know, at the very least weekly, but potentially multiple times a week, it doesn't make sense. Like there are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So at least for testing or for, you know, monthly projects, it makes more sense to rent something like that. Um, you'll, especially since the, the technology is improving so quickly, that's the other aspect of renting versus buying mm -hmm. is if something is um, going to go out of date really quickly, I wouldn't really want to buy a bonded cellular modem because some of these aren't 5G yet. So if I were to buy a 4G one and everything's moving to 5G, well, all of a sudden my like six or $8,000 purchase is useless. So it's better to like, hey, let's rent one for a day or let's rent one once a month. And the, the, for the cost of renting, you're really talking about like a, you know, a decade of rent versus buy. And certainly by the end of that decade, there will have been many revisions that make it worth not buying. So that kind of thing as well That's true. is um, something that I would, I would certainly rent and basically never buy unless I was literally using it every single day. Then it would be worth it just for the access alone, but otherwise no way. Yeah, um, I, I, on a theoretical level, agree with you, but when I actually look at my purchase versus renting history, my actions do not agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, I, I think what ends up happening with me is I look at what is the cost of the rental versus what is the cost of the purchase. And uh, I just kind of have this ratio depending on the item of like, well, if I rent it 10 times, that's the same as a purchase. So I just buy it type thing versus if you had to rent it 100 times and you're like, I'll just rent it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think that factors into it. But there is definitely something to be said for um, having the immediacy of the access, because if we go back to the the power drill of like, yes, you only need the power drill every once in a while and when you do pick it up you only turn it on and spin the thing for a second or two mm -hmm. but if this is loose and you need to fix it do you wait for them to have another sorry we're out of stock right now will will as soon as someone returns one your next your fourth on the list of like okay but i just I just want to fix this one thing. So there is something to be said for the convenience factor yeah, for sure. I can't imagine how annoying it would be if you're just like, oh, I just want to drill a hole. Well, let me drive to the hardware store and hope they have stock. And oh, this one. That That's kind of what stock, it was with me and the jigsaw. And, I just yeah. kept on needing a jigsaw. So I'm like, I'm just going to buy a jigsaw. But for that, uh, that trim saw you talked about for the flooring, that would be ridiculous to buy. Like, yes, it's, it's very accessible, but you're going to use it literally once. Once. And yep. 
what maybe in maybe in 20 years when you replace those floors yeah somebody will use it, it again maybe not even you not worth it not worth it. it'll just sit in the sit and take up space yeah so, not worth yeah. it at all yeah so that's i don't know that's that's i guess my philosophy on renting stuff um i haven't rented a whole bunch of stuff but um i guess the other aspect of it for me would be if it's not on my dime like if i don't really you know yes if I'm, I'm working with somebody else's budget then i'm more likely to say ah we'll rent it like you know i don't need to. so so this is something that i did want to make sure that it came up during this episode so i'm mm-hmm. so glad that you did say it um when you have a client the client's needs are paramount to everything else for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one wedding that I got simply because the client said, this is what I want. And every other photographer said, no, I don't have the stuff to make that happen. And I said, I don't have the stuff to make that happen, but I can acquire whether I rent or buy all of these things. Uh, Let me put together a quote and tell you how much it would be. So I charged them. uh, What they wanted was basically live streaming their, their portrait session during the wedding day. So all of six seconds after I took the photo, it showed up on a projector and all the guests could see my photo. So for an hour, there were no mistakes, no blinks, no lighting tests. Every photo had to be absolutely perfect because I had 200 guests looking over my shoulder at every photo um and so i charge that client like eight hundred dollars because i'm like hey these are all the different things i need to either buy or rent and plus hire two assistants you were one of them um of like this is how much it's gonna cost and the client could have said oh well i guess i don't want it that badly but instead what they said is yes here's my eight hundred dollars yeah totally. this is this is what i want totally so can work out that way um, yeah, when it, I mean, when it comes to production of like, you don't have 4K access, yes, you do, borrowlenses.com. Mm-hmm. You don't have access to slow-mo, yes, you do. You can rent any of these things that a client requires, just pass that on of like, you have, you don't have to eat that fee is what I'm saying. When you have clients, you can line item out all of those things. And the other thing you can line item out, and this is something that I do frequently, if you rent nothing you can still put in an equipment like usage fee because you're paying down that thing that you bought that you now used on your shoot, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it's like a seamless paper that is actually disposable because they stepped on it a bunch and now it's dirty. You have to cut off and throw it away or whether it's wear and tear on like a lens or a camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wear and tear is a hundred percent worth something. You're eventually going to have to replace that camera due to wear and tear. And so that's, that is worth an equipment fee. Um, you know, for the clients really, if the client's really motivated, that's when it gets really fun because then you can maybe pull off purchasing something that you won't use too often, but they're really motivated to have that experience. So you can just buy it for ease of access and then have it for later. Uh, that is the, that's the perfect way of doing it. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, man. That, often so do, often you're just way back it. in the day when I was fresh out of college and super broke, um, we, uh, I, I say we, I, I, and then you came and assisted, um, shot the uh, Snohomish County Rescue Helicopter Team uh, promotional video. So what had happened is they lost uh, they lost government funding, and so they were trying to raise private funding so they can have their search and rescue um, te- team. Um, they save like 200 hikers a year or something like that. So um, super important cause, and uh, the person who approached me was actually a former wedding client, and they said, hey, do you know any students because they have no money? Like, do you know anyone willing to do it for free? And I saw, like, the opportunity of all the cool stuff that I could do flying in a helicopter. I'm like, hey, I'll do it for the, like, gear rental, and I was really hoping I'd be able to buy that stuff, but they're like, no, 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 we'll rent it. Yeah. So, like... J- I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it's fair, right? Like they got such a limited budget, but that, that is a little bit of a bummer when they're not white. We, we rented like a steady, ca- the, 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 this, that's the only time I've ever used a steady cam arm. Mm-hmm. Like one of those strap harnesses. It was really fun and really cool. And now people are like, oh, just, just use a gimbal. I'm like, yeah, but there's something really nice about having a steady cam arm of like, if you're skilled and practiced with it, uh, your batteries aren't going to run out. Uh, you don't have to worry about like the calibration getting untweaked because you pressed a button. 
Well, in the spring arm ones, cancel that up and down motion yeah, so they do. well that gimbals. I mean, people have added spring arms to gimbals and stuff, and sometimes it works, They're, sometimes it doesn't. But it does not. Boy, that that vertical motion cancellation that a good steady cam gets you is you can crazy. run upstairs. Yeah. you can't do that. You can't do that with a gimbal. Really, it's so cool. It's so it's cool. not the same. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. So for that one, we we rented multiple camera cameras. We rented the steady cam arm, and then we just shot all this really cool, amazing stuff, uh, both from the ground of helicopters and from the air. We did air to air helicopter footage. That was super tight. I loved it. <laughs> I wish we could shoot that again in 4K. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, so fun. <laughs> yeah. Did they need a remake? <laughs> I'll ask. 4K special. I'm there. <laughs> so yeah that's that's uh I, I just think it's an interesting conversation to have when do you rent mm -hmm. a thing versus when do you buy a thing um i mean there's definitely something to be said for convenience but uh i think the most important thing of this episode is you have everything at your fingertips mm -hmm. and especially if it's for a client project of like just rent it pass yep. on pass on the bill yeah for sure for sure yeah that is totally legit um unfortunately overlooked but I mean that that's hundred percent can be part of your fees. You can add that on. Uh, very common practice. I, th I think what encourage. it is is th that bugs me the most is people complain about like, well, of course you can do it because you had that thing. I'm like, you could have it too. Just rent it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, just uh, find your local rental office uh, or rental uh, business rather, and uh, whatever is their inventory is now inventory that you can offer to your clients <laughs> it's your your external equipment warehouse that's true oh i've got i've got one more rental story before we wrap this one up mm -hmm. um so i bought a wide angle lens because i was very excited for it and then i took it on like two shoots and it stopped working um so i'm like what the heck lens so i sent it in for repairs um and they're like oh it's theoretically working but we think you dropped it i'm like this lens has been in my care for 48 hours. I did not drop it. Like it must have been damaged in transit. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had it I two days. It. it was, it was my precious new baby. I didn't drop it. I swear. Um, but, but you know, under warranty, whatever they fix it for me, sent it back to me. But what happened was that actually overlapped with my Iceland trip. Now I'm going to Iceland and the widest lens I own is a 50 millimeter. So what I did was I'm like, oh, I should rent something. But instead of renting the same lens, which was ginormous zoom lens, I'm just like, I'll just rent like the 20 mil prime. Like it's small. It'll get the job done. Is it the widest? No, but it's also really cheap, really easy to pack, like all of that. I go to Iceland. I shoot all my stuff with the 20 mil prime. I get back, return my rental, and then immediately buy a 20 mil prime. And then when my Zoom comes back from being repaired, I just sell it. It is like a quarter of the weight. It was half the price. The images were sharper. And I did not miss those extra like four millimeters of of wideness. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For those of you that are longtime listeners, we have said that shooting telephoto landscapes is underrated. But you're, you're going to Iceland. You need a wide angle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Before anybody brings it up. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, it's a it is a it is a great um, I think it's a great conversation, a great discussion of of when you rent versus buy, and yeah, I think renting is underrated. Um, don't be afraid of it. Uh, you don't have to tell anybody. Uh, it's your gear, and just add on a gear fee, and nobody needs to know. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's actually a lot of places like uh, Glazers where where mm -hmm. they will take a day off of your rental fee if you then buy the item. So oh, it's like cool. try to buy. All right. There you so go. you can rent it for a day and then say, yes, I absolutely love this and then buy it. And then your rental was free, essentially. Excellent. Yeah. So perfect. So check that out for your local area. There might be places like that. But yeah, I just I just thought this was an interesting conversation because rentals are are a legitimate way to acquire things that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Do buy a drill, though. It's worth it. <laughs> you don't want to rent that. I just got an impact driver. I'm like, do I need this? And then I started using yes. it. I'm like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Oh, I need this. <laughs>
All right. Uh, well, uh, thanks for joining us for this fun little episode. Uh, as usual, hit us up and give us a thumbs up or a plus one or a rating or a review or a five star, or whatever it is on your platform of choice. And go to YouTube and subscribe and go to the Patreon and all that fun stuff. Um, as usual, links are in the description. Buy a drill and rent camera gear and have fun. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend, and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.